In this video, we'll do a couple of examples of finding the winner of an election using the contingent method. So here's an example problem. Using this voter profile, find the winner of the election using the contingent method. So let's remember how the contingent method works. If one candidate wins a majority of the first place votes, then we just declare that that candidate is the winner. If not, then we're going to eliminate all candidates except the top two, those two candidates who got the most first place votes. Then we use a one-on-one -on -one majority rule election between those top two to decide the winner. So let's go back and see what we can do with this profile. So one way or the other, we're going to have to figure out how many first place votes each of these candidates got. So how do we do that? Well, let's look at each row of the profile. And let's look for A's. So we've got seven first place votes for A because those seven voters in this row of the table that's highlighted, they all voted for A as their top choice. What about B? Well, we've got two different groups of voters. We've got eight voters in the second row of the profile who like B the best. And we've also got three more voters at the bottom of the profile that like B the best. So that adds up to 11 total first place votes for B. C has 10 first place votes, and D has five first place votes. So we know that B has the most first place votes. But does B have a majority of the first place votes? If so, then B is the contingency winner, and we can just be done. So how do we figure that out? Well, we need to know how many total voters there are. So we can just add up the numbers in the left-hand column of our voter profile. 10 plus 8 plus 7 plus 5 plus 3. That gives us 33 total voters. And if we take 11, the 11 votes that B got, and divide it by 33, we see that B got around 33% of the vote. But B would have had to have received more than 50% of the vote to be declared a majority winner. So B does not have a majority of the votes. So that means that we're going to have to start eliminating candidates. Since we're using the contingent method, B and C are the top two, so we're going to eliminate A and D. And so now we have a runoff election that's just between B and C. It's B versus C. A and D are not uh, candidates in this runoff election. So to find the winner of that runoff election, we do a one-on-one -on -one majority rule election. So we pretend that A and D are no longer in the election. So we kind of dim them out, as you see here in the video. And that lets us focus on the Bs and the Cs a little bit easier. If you were doing this on a piece of paper, you might actually cross out all of the As and the Ds in the profile, so that it would be easier for you to focus on the Bs and the Cs. So in the first row of my table, I see that those 10 voters would vote for C. The next eight voters, they would vote for B. The next group of seven voters, they have A listed as their top choice, but A is not in this runoff, so they have to settle for their second choice, which is C. The next group of five voters, well, they would really like D to be win the winner, but D is not in the runoff. Their second choice, A, is also not in the runoff, so they have to settle for their third choice and vote for B. And then finally, the three voters down at the bottom, they vote for B as well. So if we add up these totals, all of the voters that cast their vote for B and all of the voters that cast their vote for C, what we see is that C narrowly beats out B 17 to 16, and so C is the contingent winner. Now what happens if there's a tie? Sometimes, due to ties, there isn't a clear top two. There's two ways this can happen. Either there's a tie for first place among three or more candidates, or there's a clear first place candidate, but then there's a tie for second place. If this happens, then we're not going to be able to use a one-on-one -on -one matchup to declare the winner, so instead we're going to have to use plurality among those top candidates. Let's see how that works. So here's another example, very similar to the one that we did before. Again, we're given a voter profile, and we have to find the winner of the election using the contingent method. Once again, we're going to need to find the first place vote totals, and once again, we can easily figure that out. So we have A with nine first place votes, B with nine first place votes. Remember, they get seven votes from the third row of the profile and two votes from the last row of the profile. C has 10 first place votes, and D has five first place votes. So we see that C is in the lead, C has the most first place votes, but then there's a tie for second. So we don't have a top two, instead what we really have is a top three. So we'll eliminate D, and now we have A and B and C, and one of those candidates is going to be the contingent winner. How do we figure out which one? Well, we're going to use plurality. So A versus B versus C plurality election, we pretend that D is no longer there, D has been eliminated, and now we see who each of these groups of voters would vote for. Well. Here's the result. The 10 voters vote for C as their top choice. The 9 voters vote for A as their top choice. The 7 voters vote for B as their top choice. The 5 voters have D as their top choice, but they can't vote for D. D has been eliminated. So they vote for their second choice, which is A. And then the last group of 2 voters votes for B. 
Again, we add up each column of this little chart, and we see that A is the winner with 14 votes. And so A is the contingent winner.